Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy. Jeremy. At Tested. At Tested. Jeremy Jer Williams. It's a week of build, guys. Woohoo! Week of build. Week of build. Uh, what that means, if you don't know what that is, is that for the next at least one week, maybe two weeks, maybe all up to three weeks. Could be a month and a half. We uh, don't know. Ooh, yeah. Will and I and a special guest will be doing some builds. And the builds typically last one week. Um, and sometimes they involve Lego, sometimes they're craft kits. Today, we're going to build an arcade cabinet. It's, yeah. a, it's the tiniest arcade cabinet. A little bar top arcade cabinet. Oh. Uh, this is called the Porta Pie. Hold on, is this some cooking show nonsense? Did you do this in advance? <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> no, no, no. That's this is the fastest week. we can build right. ever. So here's the, in my search for the most first world of problems, yes. I, have, I have an arcade cabinet that is too small. And I, I want to have one that has a bigger screen. So what is oh, this okay. right now? So this is the original Porta Pie okay. that was, uh, it was actually a Kickstarter that coincidentally ran concurrent to mine. I didn't even know it. Uh, Yours meaning the game the, frame, the which game is directly frame. behind you over your left shoulder. <laughs> and so once I was uh, sort of into game frame uh, construction mode, I, I got the, I wanted to build an arcade cabinet, um, or I wanted to have one. So I went online, did some searching, and I found the Porta Pie, which was sort of perfect. It was just the right size. I don't want a big one like like you built that's just too much space, but this one took up just the right amount of space to play the old games whenever I wanted to on some nice controls. Um, and so he sells them uh, for about 330 bucks just for the kit, mm -hmm. okay. uh, which is I think is pretty reasonable. And that's that includes everything? Yeah, everything except, you need? except for the Raspberry Pi. That's yeah. a weird thing that's to like not include. $25, well, yeah, $25. May, you know, maybe he figures a lot of people have them. Plus, oh, that's true. plus um, he was maybe figuring that they would eventually upgrade the Raspberry Pi. Which they did. Which they did. Um, so, or he sells them for uh, like another 120 bucks assembled. Now, I got this assembled because oh. I didn't have the time. So the need you were the, building game frames. You were already assembling game frames. Right, so you exactly. had plenty of assembly I work in your life. I was burning out on building things. And um, yeah, so anyway. But we should explain what it is. So sure. it's, it's, a, it's a LCD screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, with some arcade buttons and 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 joystick. Yep. Like, it's a normal eight-way joystick. These are American-style arcade buttons. Mm -hmm. I just pressed a bunch of buttons. It probably did stuff. Um, and so you get a laser-cut wooden case. Can you get see underneath there. Everything yeah. wired. It's all wired pretty much like a real arcade yeah. cabinet is. Um, there's no magic there. It's just it's just the way it works. And then it's uh, the Raspberry Pi outputs to an LCD screen. That's how, how big? Like six inches, probably. Over HDMI. I think this is seven-inch screen. Okay. Uh, but, but that's, that's a pretty. It's a 480p screen. It's total standard def. So vector games don't look too sharp on it. Um, Does it have Wi-Fi and stuff built in, or do you, do you no. choose to put that in if you want to put it on the Pi? No, you have to choose that yourself. Okay. Put a little dongle onto it, or just put you know an Ethernet jack into it. Mm. But so I, I'm perfectly happy with this. I was, you know, it's really cool. But even with the Raspberry Pi 2, I found that the sound is a little wonky. It doesn't sound exactly right. Things are off sync. You get this little static every now and then, and it doesn't play every game. And most importantly for me, I couldn't find a way to get uh, a spinner to work with it. Oh, Wait, so you want to play Tempest? Tempest, Tron, Discs of Tron, yeah. you know, Arkanoid. These are good games that, I, and plus driving games, and actually works very well as a steering wheel. And this so. is this is a thing that you got to kind of introduce your kids. Oh yeah. To to classic arcade games, right? right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so there's games beyond what the Raspberry Pi can do, like Dragon's Lair that. They want to be able to play. Oh, okay. so, FMV and animation. Right. So um, fantastic. We're getting. Gun blues. We're not. I, plus, so the new one that he just announced that we that we're going to build today is an HD screen. Oh. Rather than a ten or a seven inch screen, it's a ten point one inch screen. Is it still Raspberry Pi though? It, he sells it to run on Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. which it it can, but we're going to run it on an Intel Nook. Oh, the little hockey puck sized yeah, right. x86. So my like question, that's a real that's gonna be a real computer for oh, us. That'll a, be, that should be more be power like a than you need. Serious MAME cabinet. Yeah. You, you put the Raspberry Pi one in this, and that was good enough to run MAME. Well, yeah, Pac-Man, early games, some you know, what, emulators. What, what are the limits of Raspberry Pi for performance? Because a lot of these games, in terms of emulation, you need a lot. Of I'm compute. telling you, even Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, doesn't sound right. Uh, so it's uh, you know you can play the games, but they're not going to be. Arcade accurate. Okay. So, are you thinking with the NUC, you're going to be able to do like scanline emulation and stuff like that? Are you going to get oh, crazy? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I can't wait to see this. This is going to yeah, be fun. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, I can't wait to see it either. Put some visual filters on it. Uh, so, in terms of the assembly, we're going to be building this the entire week. Uh, this first episode is available to everyone. You're watching it right now uh -oh, on YouTube or on the site. Uh, but the rest of the builds and the rest of the weeks of builds in these coming weeks will be on tested.com. So check that out, tested.com slash membership. 
But let's get started. We're gonna try to work together to build it. Thank and, you for and, Hold on, it's worth mentioning, if people are watching this now, mm -hmm. we have a promotion running right now for Tested Premium Memberships, where you can get a poster designed by Adam. It'll be screen printed and lovely. We don't have it here because it's not actually made. We're recording this in the past. But trust me, go to tested.com slash membership and check it out if you want to find out how to get the poster, how to watch the rest of the week of build. Um, and I think let's get started and see, see how this thing goes together. Jeremy, That's I can't right. wait to see this. Okay, cool. What have you got in front? That's a big cardboard box. Yeah, this, so this is all the parts. Um, we're we're going to divide and conquer this is the I, idea, right? I decided to go with a kit this time because I had the time for it. But what then up, switches? When I opened... <laughs> That was terrible. When, when I opened this box, I immediately gave you guys a call. Don't disrespect the switches. I, I was uh, intimidated by the number of components. So there's there. a lot of laser cut yes. plastic and uh, acrylic and plywood here. Yeah. Um, now this is this is obviously the arcade panel, mm -hmm. uh, and he's custom made this for me to include a spot for a spinner. because ah. that is that is not something that that his kit supports out of the box. Okay. No, be, you could have laser cut that yourself as well. Like a lot oh, of this is absolutely, customizable. absolutely. He doesn't sell the plans to do the laser cuts, mm. um, but you could absolutely, you know. If you want to take a lot of time and I mean, design an arcade cabinet, that's you what, could do that. That's essentially what he did. Yeah. Um, we've seen a bunch of really cool arcade cabinets over the last year or two. Like the one for Killer Queen, I don't know if you've seen that in person, Jeremy? Yeah, I have. Um, but it looks, it has, when you look at it from the right angle, it looks like it has the right depth of a old school CRT based arcade cabinet. But they just did it by playing with the angles and the and the perspective on that cabinet. Because it's actually like, it's super, super, super shallow All right. in the real world. I hope they have that at Cal Extreme this year. I would love to play that with you. It is yeah. my all-time... Like, I've is, never played it because there's always a line. Oh, it's super... It, do you go to Chicago ever? No, uh, sure sometimes. Yeah. I can hook you up if you go to Chicago. Yeah, they're there, right? I know. No, no, they're in New Jersey, the oh, okay. guy, or New York, the guys who make it. Okay. But there's a there's like a killer queen scene in Chicago. <laughs> like there's a couple <laughs> of bars say. that have the machines. Wow. There's one of the Cards Against Humanities office. There's a couple bars that have the machines? Oh, yeah. Wow. Bar barcades. And yeah, this yeah, is a, a limited release. So th this is the screen. This is the 10-inch oh, screen. Right. We're going to put okay. this aside, I guess, for Can't a while. Save that for a while. Yeah. Um, Killer Queen is a five-person versus five-person head-to-head arcade machine, and it's like class-based. Mm. So you have one person plays the queen, uh, the other four people on each team play drones that can then be upgraded into warriors and stuff like that. It ends up being really intense and, oh, that's a nice spinner. 5v5. 5v5 um, classic arcade. You, <coughs> this weight on the bottom is astounding. Like it's, same same spinner you have. Oh, no. You mine's, got, mine's a little different. You have the one that from my old Devastator, right? No, I, I, it you looks the same at the top but the bottom. I don't think I have that same counterweight. Oh, they, counter they make two different size counterweights. Yeah, I have the smaller counterweight. Oh, I didn't realize. I thought I had the smaller weight. I, the, didn't, I didn't know. The bigger counterweight, the longer the spin. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, I like where this is going. Uh, so, uh, t if you to give you a little background also on, on Jeremy, and we'll talk about Killer Queen and continue with Killer Queen in just a second. Jeremy, you're a big arcade enthusiast. Sure. Big pinball enthusiast. I think anybody who grew up in the 80s has some nostalgia for the arcade games. Um, and your passion for arcades and pinball has led you down some deep paths. In terms dark, of, dark paths. Well, in terms say. of collecting machines and looking the main. Yeah, mainly, um, I mean, you know, I'm a bi I have a few pinball machines, and I route and I operate some on location. Uh, I feel like pinball is an, you know, something you can't emulate very well, mm -hmm. and it's an important part of uh, American pop culture. But in terms of arcades, you're not buying boards. Uh, you know, I'm. Yeah. I know there's purists out there that are serious about the arcade cabinets. You got to have the official arcade cabinet with the real controls. I feel like the leap between an emulator and those is small enough that I'm okay with an emulator. And you've been emulating for forever. You've been running emulating ga emulated games. Yeah, since I knew you, since, I think. I think since you can. I, I mean, I remember when Mame, you know, was first being developed and yeah. trying out the early builds and stuff, and, and putting them on like Pocket PC. We, and yeah. stuff like that. Well, I mean, and and the thing, there are a lot of people that get really. First off, we should probably mention, emulating any video game is a legal gray area for the most part. There's no good legal source for these ROMs. Um, you can buy licenses to play the games in like big arcade packs, but they rarely come with the ROMs. So then you're like you're right. you're always operating in gray area. Um, there are now some companies that have licensed their old games and will sell you a main cabinet that is essentially a license has licensed you know Frogger, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and and yeah the Namco games, right? I said a handful of oh, games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but even some of those are gray area too. So. You know, be responsible. Don't steal stuff. 
Um, what, okay, so there's the frame. Where are we starting with this, Jeremy? What, I, I've got the plans open in front of me. Also, where can people find these plans? Okay, uh, or, or, or buy the kit. Buy the kit. Retrobuiltgames.com, where he also <laughs> sells this shirt. It's a good shirt. For a dollar. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's a dollar? Yeah, well, I think he, he has too many of them. Oh. And what? so he's trying to get rid of them. It has his logo on it. I'm I sorry, know. Jeremy. i got to go buy this t-shirt right now. <laughs> yeah. Retro Built Games. Yeah. He's a good guy. Um, how much does the kit cost? Three. Well, now this is the HD one that just got released. I'd have to look it up. I'll, I'll look it up. The nine-inch one uh, is uh, three thirty for just for what we're doing here, mm -hmm. and then an extra one twenty or so to have it assembled by by okay. Ryan. Um, and he's out of Europe, you said? No, no, no. Oh. He's in uh, Pittsburgh. This is ridiculous. A dollar T-shirt. That's what I'm telling you. I would Medium, you large, and extra large. Oh man, this cabinet looks great. Uh, so full kit. Yeah, three thirty. It's still three thirty. And 445 assembled. For and that comes with the screen. You just have to add a $30 Raspberry Pi, and maybe yeah. a Wi-Fi dongle. Do you need a? Does it come with a power brick? Yep. Okay. Cool. Let's go. So let's get started. Where are we? Where? <coughs> what's our first? Um, I think we should start with stuff that needs to be glued. Yeah. So that would be. Uh, there's a bit of gluing. So um, wood glue we got right here. So this is. This needs to be glued. All right. Which side do you want up on the? Oh, it so on this which side starts. You want to stick on. So this is going to be like. That. You want the stick on the left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be like that. I get this t-shirt in before the end of the week. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not, that's not how it works. That's not going to work. I don't think that's how it works. Why do you need it by the end of the week? Norm, well, Norm has no sense of delayed gratification. Yes. <laughs> We've established this. How do I hear about RoboBoat Games? I saw it in person. No, no, no. You saw it on Tested. <laughs> that's right. I saw it on Tested. <laughs> All right. Um, so that has so to get glued? Let's pull. I'm going to pull. You have the instructions? I've got out? the instructions right here. I have them open in a tab. All right. I like that he has version numbers on his. Uh... So you'll notice in the instructions in the contents at number 14 is assembly with our big screen. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have to, it's sort of like choose your own adventure. We're going to get to a point where it's going to say, if you have the HD screen, jump to page 14. Oh, I like that. All right. Mm. Okay, pre assemblies. So uh, I feel like we should figure out wh what all these. Parts... Are you going to paint or stain your cabinet? No. You're not going to? I mean, I want to, but I, I just don't have the patience for that. It says paint after the cabinet is glued. Uh, there's two different methods. If you're gonna, <clears throat> if you're gonna sand the whole thing down yeah. and do like a, a nice spray paint job, <clears throat> I think then you can paint once it's done. Oh, okay. But if you're gonna hand paint everything, uh, it's m maybe best to do it before you assemble it. All right, it. so for uh, page, uh, page 12, step one, cabinet shell assembly, let's gather those parts and null them out. Cabinet, wait, what page? Page 12? Yeah, yes. these guys, you mean? Yes. All right, but there's all. See, I think we can jump ahead to this one and just get this gluing because this is okay. this is a simple simple thing. So Will wants to charge glue, uh, get in charge of gluing that, and then Jeremy uh, will grab the pieces Paint. we need for the uh, the drill. And do we have a, a drill here? Uh, we uh, everything's been uh, pre-drilled. So we just need screwdrivers. So you can skip the okay. the drilling instructions. Did you get a big screwdriver? Or just have the little ones. We might want to see if Joey can grab a big screwdriver. I've got my from toolbox. The, uh, okay, but uh, I don't know about. How many more we, we need? Um, I have a countersink here if you need it. I don't no, know. No, everything's already been countersunk. It's already countersunk? Okay, that's nice. Well, at that's least nice. I asked him to. We'll see. It sounds like this guy's on top of things. Okay, so I'm going to step 15 to start the gluing. Yep. Are you, you're looking for the, for the control panel? I'm still scrolling, trying to look, find the uh, control panel. Do, do. Are you talking about? Just uh, to be clear. Oh, sorry. Don't. Screwing in the control panel now. Well, the two parts of the control panel need to be glued together. Uh. And I'm pretty sure I know how it goes. I just want to double check with the instructions. Here we go. It's nice that you've already done a smaller version of this. No, well, he didn't. He bought it fully I assembled. I bought it fully assembled. But he had, so Ryan has that whole one hour long video you can watch for how to assemble it. And you've watched the video. And I did watch that. Wow. <coughs> I like that. People who make kits. The other thing I should mention is this is not the stock um, hand, cabinet uh, hand rest, like control panel yeah. rest. It's a little wider. This is the comfort uh, hand rest. <laughs> it's ergonomic. So your thumb, your uh, palm. So you got a little there. bit of a. Uh, it's like the. It's like the wide stance of hand rests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the original one's just a little Elbows pointy out. around the corners. I'm just gonna say I know what's going on here. Okay. What could possibly go wrong? 
And, so you're uh, gluing those two pieces yeah, together. So we'll, if you could... I found the spot in the instructions. Oh, dude. It says grab the notched control panel, right. lay it as shown. Glue on this side. There you go. <clears throat> so I think that they need to be glued like That's, that. That looks, that stack checks out with me. And then make sure that, you know, the holes are flush. If the holes don't line up, we have problems. There you go. And you can use these clamps. Clamps I bought just oh, for this purpose. Oh, you got little baby clamps. Nice. Yeah. You might need a couple more. I don't know. Uh, and then this. We're using Typon, original wood glue. Typon 1, original. <laughs> you didn't need waterproof, so you nope. went with the one. That's right. Nope. Um, this, I think this goes on later. This is an acrylic. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a glamour piece. This yeah. is bling. Yeah. And then uh, you can also put a, you can put, um, did you mess up already? No, no. I hit the button and I lost my page. You can also put images behind that. What do you mean yeah. already? Right. What is this? I should, there was a scream. All right, All right, so you definitely need this piece. Oh, no, not... Uh, yes, it is that piece. Oh, great. Uh, I'm gathering the, the pieces that you need. What page are you on? Page 12. You know what we could use is some paper towels. Do I still have that roll of paper towels? I do! Great. Uh -huh. Here okay. you go. Now, you also need this piece. Some That's pieces look about. very similar. I know, I'm, I'm trying to... So this is not that piece, because... At least it doesn't have the same number of holes. This is the bottom, right? So this is made to mount the Raspberry Pi. So I think he's just adjusted it to add the variations for Raspberry Pi 2. Okay. So it's probably the, the right piece. Okay. And then, um, let's see. Nope, don't need that yet. Don't need that yet. There are a lot of pieces here. Yes. And now we need some side panels, what you need. We don't need this at all. Oh, this wood has damage on it. Okay. What? Need Where's the damage? Piece. Oh, that's going to go on the inside. Hey, that's your right. your top plate has holes around the joystick. Is that intended? Uh, yes. However, I, shouldn't those be countersunk? I would think so, but I have a countersink here. We can do that. I ha you do? Yeah. How do you have a countersink? You use the drill press? Well, I can just use it with a hand drill. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't... Okay. I, I won't do it right now. Do you mean to not glue? I mean, I have no, to glue now. You kind might as of. well. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay, here's a, a side, another side. Should I pop this out? Probably. Yeah. Oh, that's that slimy. Here we go. If you need, I have the I have the box cutter over here. If you guys need it. The other piece that you need. And definitely not one of these. I've been doing a lot of stuff with cyanoacrylate and uh, acrylic glue lately. Super so glue. using wood glue where you have time to make a mistake and yeah. then fix it. Yeah. So nice. And actually, this is the last piece of glue. Yeah, I'd like to get good at that acrylic glue. I bought some. You need, it, the, the trick is it's just a little bit. That's it, what I learned. It always it's comes so out too bit. much. Because it, it all kind of came it, around it, the edges. It also, yeah, all, the it looks glue, ugly. For the small puddle, it actually spreads because you're, yeah. you're bonding. And it, it, the surface It basically spreads. welds them together, It welds right? them together. So for people who don't know what we're talking about, if you are putting acrylic pieces together, um, you can acrylic glue is just, it's like non-viscous. It's like almost fluid, you put it in a syringe bottle, and you squeeze out a little bit on one side, and basically it melts that acrylic that it touches, um, not to a point where it actually like withers it away, but just that surface, uh -huh. and then when you squeeze it against another piece of acrylic, it welds them together. So it's not even glue, it's just bonding the two pieces yep. of acrylic to each other using acrylic. It's pretty neat stuff. I feel like it's probably really toxic though, too. Uh, uh, do you need a screwdriver to pop that out? Yeah, I guess that would be best. There you go. Thanks. I might need a flathead though. I want to dig in here, but. There you go. Do you have a deeper jaw? Yeah, I'm going to use one of these just temporarily. Those are, those are for you. So theoretically, this kit takes about what? Ryan says it takes him uh, four hours. Four hours because he one. knows what he's doing. <coughs> but he's also one person. So we're hoping to make up for that. And he's already countersunk some things. Yes, so. exactly. We're head All of the right. game. So these are now, oh wait, is that, should that be popped out? No. Do you want to inspect, Jeremy? No, I have complete faith in you. Look at that. I can't even tell that that's two pieces of wood. Yep, nice that's work. the goal. <laughs> there we go. Um, I think, so you nailed it, right? This is all the pieces we need? Yeah, that's it, that's uh, it. That's where's, it. Where's this one? Oh. Maybe that's more. Did I, should I have gone slower? Should I just look through instructions and look yes. for stuff that I can do with sub-assemblies? Yes. 
Okay. Well, so do that. Here you go, Or do you want me to keep working on this? I mean, if you can clamp it where the arc, where there's no arcade buttons, you could go actually start putting the arcade buttons in. I'm gonna wait. I don't want to do that until the glue dries. If a little bit. If there's glue in coming out, yeah, I, I cleaned wait. it up, but I don't. Okay. Like, that, that feels like a mistake sure. potentially. Um, uh, if you want, I can start doing the speaker stuff. Okay. Let me hand you speakers. That's a good idea. Um, there's those little cardboard yep. boxes. Yeah, and I'll need the I'll need the one with the two big round holes. Okay. Looks like, and then I need some hardware. Um. Is there a box chest of hardware? Screws? Yeah. So when you were doing uh, the that one. game frame, Jeremy, <laughs> were one. you ever tempted to just buy a laser cutter and do all the laser in yourself? Oh, from the beginning. But uh, laser cutters are not like laser printers They're in pre terms of cost. They cost, you know, about 20 grand to start for a good one. And it just never made sense. <laughs> um, so I went with Pinoco to do all of my laser, laser cuts. And it, wow. it's still made sense to do that even after you know like a, a, scale thousand, ramped up. a thousand game frames. Pinoco being a local uh, CNC service where you can get uh, rent laser time on machines do they, uh, do they do not, it for you. It's not, I mean, they, it's all, they, they do it. They do it. You know, I guess you, in, in the sense you're renting the time, but you're, you're charged by, build by, you build upload by your design. design and you get it in the mail two weeks mm. later. And you're telling them what materials and... Yeah, yeah, you case. choose the materials. And that saves you all the time of trying to figure out what your material, um, what your cut time should right. be, your temp, you know, your right. like power they, they, they have the expertise. Yeah, uh, for, for so every material. So yeah. Tell us what you're getting out of this package right now. Uh, uh, this looks like the video control board. Uh, so this is eventually going to get mounted. At, um, at Pinoco, do they also do? Um, do they also do like CNC milling and stuff like that? No, it's they, just they do do 3D printing, but the, that's a very minuscule amount of their business. I understand. Okay. They're so for people who have never you know, looked on the other side of an a modern arcade cabinet or even a main cabinet before, uh, it's basically, when we're talking about Raspberry Pis and Intel Nukes, those are computers. They're you small yeah, microcomputers. Right? They have RAM. They have a video out. Uh, so most of them have like, HDMI out. It's a system um, on a chip. It's a system well, on a chip. Well, the Nuke, not so much. And, 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 and they, you know, they have a processor with, and uh, some I.O. But to get that working with the arcade cabinet, um, you actually can't just plug in, for example, all your arcade buttons into the Nuke. You need, it's going to be something like an iPack, like a like intermediate control board. Well, but you can even use an Arduino or a Teensy or something for that if you wanted, right, right Jeremy? Uh, for what? For To serve as the interface between the arcade buttons and, oh, your, yeah, and your system. Absolutely. I mean, just to do the button. Yeah, yeah to, to, to register buttons and send that. <laughs> but right. that doesn't look like a keyboard for a computer. You, you, you probably wouldn't want to do that for a Nook. Uh, so w with the with the thing that we're going to use actually converts, and the thing that you used, it, conver yeah. it converts switches into mm -hmm. keyboard right. presses. Exactly. So it thinks that up on the pad is like W. Yes, and how the, you wire that. So it so just basically looks, looks on like that a control board, which we'll show in a little bit, every slot, every, every point where you wire in is correlated to a key command, or you can reprogram that right. with the software. And uh, for for the, what Ryan did here with the Pi is he basically did the same thing, but in software. Mm. So he connects the switches to pins, general I/O pins on the Raspberry Pi, ah, and then so you the, don't even need the right. The and then the Raspberry Pi thinks that it's a keyboard. That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna scooch the control panel out over out of the way here. Looks like I do need this now. So I guess I'm opening the video control board. Has the uh, HDMI out, power in, but it also has this little controller at the top where I can control the brightness of the monitor. So that's got to get mounted here. <coughs> Do so you have a listing of all the screw types here at some point, or no? Don't I don't know. Oh wait, there they were. That's one of those things that doing 3D printer builds has always been incredibly useful, is if they have actually a printed to scale version of all of the screws that you're going to use, yeah. so that you can tell the difference between a number six and a number eight half inch. So I presume these are these are American buttons. These are half buttons. 
You know more about that than I do. Those are American buttons. The round top ones are the are the fighting American buttons. buttons. Uh, Japanese buttons are shorter. So the long the long screw is usually American buttons. Uh, on the American side, Hap makes the buttons. On Japanese side, Sanwa and Saimitsu. Uh, they have different tops and they register just a little bit differently. Basically, if it's convex, it's American. If it's concave, it's Japanese. Is that right? Yeah, concave means yes. If it's if a mountain, it, if it's bulbous, mountain or valley. Yeah, valley, it's American. Mountain, it's Japanese. Yes. Mound. Um. Huh. Reading the instructions. Jeremy, on this speaker mount, he doesn't give an orientation for the for the poles. Uh huh. I assume you want them both facing the same direction, probably down or uh, in, maybe. Let's do it in. Like this, sure. so that the so that the speaker mounts are on this side, and they follow through the center. So then they'll run through the center. Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Norm, so there's another part here. Yes. That I'm looking at the same page. Goes on top of the uh, monitor control board. You know the little buttons. Okay. I'm not even sure how these are supposed to mount in here. Very strange. So what you're talking about right now, this is the top of the cabinet. And if we have the, uh, what might be useful is I'm going to bring up the old one as sure. an analog to show people. Because structurally, it'll be the same. We can put that one actually. Let's try it right here. Yeah. Get the, there it is. There we go. So, so right here, this is a, a monitor control board. Um, I'll take this. I'll put this right here. What I'll do is without pushing this off. Is this all the hardware? Uh-huh. OK. I just want to make sure I'm using the right screws. I'll illustrate where we are in terms of the process. Yep. So right now, <coughs> this this board is the equivalent of that board. Uh, this is a board that's behind it. Behind it. Okay. Yeah. So, I believe. But you need to, uh, isn't it? So I'm not sure. It's not clear to me. Like, where's the other board? Let's just find how they how they go together. Yep. 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 This looks, looks like, like that. It. Yep, that is it. Well, now this looks similar too. Oh, huh. see how there's three? There's three of them, yeah. yeah. So that's on the bottom. OK, mental note. Wow. The magnets on the speakers make getting the screws lined up right really hard. Really? If you don't push them through the hole on the wood. Like, if you push them through the hole in the speaker and then try to line it up. Do you need a hot glue gun for this? I don't think so. It says that if you don't have a Dremel, a hot glue gun for those top buttons. Oh, I'm you know, because I don't have the Dremel, we might. I can always do that at home, too. Okay. <coughs> I don't, we don't have a hot glue gun here anymore, do we, Norm? I do not think so. I bought, no, I bought the routing bit for, to do it with the Dremel. I'll just do it. What, is, do what do you need to route with the Dremel? These holes, so. The top buttons. Yeah, where, where are those buttons? It's going to be in this box. Is it? Nope. Actually, so many boxes. No. Are not in here no. either? No. Are they not in here? No. This is just a joystick. That's the joystick. So much stuffs. And we're coming up on 30 minutes, guys. Do we want to run a little bit longer? Or? Yeah, let's run a little bit longer. Let's get to a point where I feel like we've accomplished hey, something. Hey, I've accomplished something. I glued some stuff. I think, I think it's... We're, this is going to be pretty much what we do for a while. We might want to invent a stopping point. Well, there's the hardware there, so it's not. Yeah, I have all it, the screws and washers. What about and stuff that one at the here. end? Is it nothing? Is that not it? That oh, this box. Ah. Yeah. Oh no, that's the nope, one you were looking at before. Uh, and it's not in that, that those bags that Will has next to him. What are you looking for? Little buttons, uh, a little black and a little red button. I have not seen any buttons. There's uh, hardware in here. Yeah. That's all cables. Here's a here's power. Looks like. And it's not That's this all black one either. Is it not this? It's not this one either. Is it in this no. box right here? No. Oh, so many boxes. Where's opening joystick. all the boxes? Oh, phooey. Not Is it in with the arcade box. switches? That's not in here either. That's troublesome. 
That's definitely not undoing this. Oh, you know what? So these aren't lining up super well on uh -huh. the square side. Do you think that they're supposed to be rotated? The picture has circular ones. Let me see if there's any further instructions. I don't think it's going to matter. I'm not worried. Okay. I mean, you got three in. Does the fourth one not fit in? Uh, the fourth one's going to be a weird fit, probably. But he's only showing three screws in. We'll see how they line up. Use the other speaker to see how it lines up. It rotated. Well, that's a good idea. Two We're using small the old nine buttons. Hmm, that fits perfectly. So then I'll do one down, one down, and one angled up. Okay. For the fit. fit. Okay. This makes no sense, Jeremy. I know. This is. I it fell um, down here somewhere. Well, guys, it's been a great week of build. Oh, look, look I can't believe there. all we look accomplished. Is that? Is this is the another box? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey guys. guys. There they are. There Six they are. Us. Well, this, these are some switches. Oh, they're in there. There they are. We found them. Like, Success. Like Lego. Ryan doesn't make mistakes. Do you ever wow. lose Lego pieces when you're doing? No, never. But never. We never lose anything here. Wow. Perfectly Catharsis. clean. <laughs> Catharsis. Everything's easy to find. A it's moment, the tidiest a moment workplace. Of clarity and and uh, satisfaction and, and relief. Um, that seems like a good place as oh. any. Is it, you're just oh, really? Not. You're gonna kill okay. it now? <laughs> well, we found that we found the important piece. Oh. We're gonna leave, leave them on a cliffhanger, um, so we can actually proceed. All right. um, but basically, we'll be spending this entire week uh, assembling this arcade cabinet, the upgrade version of the one I have in front of me, the HD version, um, and hopefully at the end of the week we'll be playing some MAME games. Who knows? We're gonna MAME each other? Go. We're gonna MAME each other. Nice. MAMING. Tested. MAMING. Thanks for building my arcade cabinet, guys. <laughs> uh, we have plenty of other stuff Fully on the site build stuff, uh, this week and next week. We're starting a week of build, and as Will mentioned earlier, uh, we are running an awesome promotion on the site right now. Uh, if you want to sign up for a membership, you're going to get an exclusive poster designed by Adam, hand drawn and screen printed. It's gorgeous. It's really, really good. You got to check it out on the site. Uh, until then, we'll see you tomorrow on test.com. See ya. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.